and Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus we thank you because you are good you are kind you're faithful I ask you in Jesus name that whatever you've started oh God you will finish it we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus mighty name we pray praise the Lord please you can have your sins amen welcome to church glory to God hallelujah all right so let's get into it so I would begin to teach we'll continue our teaching so remember that one on our fast and um, I really want to thank our pastors you know you know our pastors it's close to 40 days we're fasting now you know the pastors have been close to 40 days fast from NLP to the September fast you wouldn't realize that you know literally so thank you all of the pastors that you know are joining that so we're talking about prayer this month we're talking about prayer this month and I'm continuing my teaching on becoming a man of prayer the goal two things I hope to achieve number one to challenge you to pray that's the first thing but the bigger thing is that for the person that is praying and he's saying that I'm praying but there's a gap I can't see the result I want to give you Bible principles that will make your prayers effective it will effective praise God hallelujah let's turn our Bibles quickly to Genesis chapter 24 in verse 12 Maybe we should read Proverbs 21 first. And I want to talk about what prayer does exactly. Many of us understand that we should pray. But what does prayer, what exactly does prayer do? How does prayer work? How is it? So in this teaching, you will understand, number one, what prayer does. Then number two, you will understand, when I'm praying and I'm not seeing any results, what exactly do I need to do to get the kind of result that I want? See what the Bible says here. The Bible says, and the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water he is, it turns it whithersoever he wills. Meaning something very powerful here. That when, you, when God wants to walk, one of the things God does is that he provides influence. Very powerful. So God, this is the thing. With God, God doesn't force people. Give me the chairs again. Let me give an instant. When God does something, God doesn't force people. Let me tell you what God does. See, when the Bible says, see what? It says the king's heart is the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. It says the way God moves water, that's the same way God moves the heart of a king. You know, this is how God does it. This is how God, very powerful. This is how God does it. If God wants to make sure you sit here, he's not going to force you and say, Ben, sit here. He's not going to do that. You know what he's going to do? He's going to move. He's going to make it impossible for you to sit anywhere else. So when he says sit down here, he didn't first sit down here. But the only available space is for what? It's here. Sit down. So that's what the Bible says. Uh, look at the river. The river flows through the path of the what, lowest resistance. That's what it means when it says the heart of the king. God will just put roadblock here. Put roadblock here. You say, where should I go? You go this way. That's the work of prayer. Glory to God. So that's the first thing. Genesis chapter 24. I want to show you how prayer works. Uh, how prayer works. How prayer works. J you can take it. Genesis chapter 24. And I'm saying this to you because I need you to understand that there are no coincidences. There are orchestrations. There are no coincidences. There are, with God, there are no coincidences. There are orchestrations. So Saul said, watch, watch this now. When it was, that thing I showed you, just watch this. When it was time for Saul to become a king, a donkey got missing. The reason why is that Saul must of necessity find himself in the hand of Samuel according to prophecy. So something must go wrong or go right for him to move location. So you know the thing? The Bible says before Saul got to Samuel, God told Samuel, prepare food. Tomorrow Saul is coming eventually Saul got missing watch this now and this is a powerful prayer Saul's father's donkey got missing and when his, father donkey's, his father's donkey got missing his father sent him why him orchestration to go and look for the donkey when they were looking at they couldn't find a place then one of the servants of Saul say but this is the place where the prophet Samuel is let's go and see him he can tell us where the donkey is why did the servant suggest that the thought had to come to his heart because Saul had to go somewhere so eventually when God got to Samuel's house when Saul got to Samuel's house he says enter he says sit down you are not going home today the room is prepared for you 
Someone said, so said, what's going on? The reason why is that certain things were already there. And that's why I say, life is not about, what do they call it? Coincidences is about orchestration. So let's read what prayer does. Genesis chapter 24 in verse 12. Genesis chapter 24 in verse 12. And this is the servant of Abraham praying. And this prayer was about marriage. The Bible says, and he said, O God of my father Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. He says, behold, he was praying for a wife. He said, behold, I stand here by the well of, by the well of water. And the daughters of men and the daughters of the men of the city have come to draw water. And it come and let it come to pass. This is his prayer. Let it come to pass. That the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And this will be her response, she shall say, Drink. I will give the camel drink also. Let it be the same person you have appointed as a wife for my servant, for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that the Lord hath shown kindness unto, mas unto my master. Take note of the prayer. Look at the next verse. The Bible says, And it came to pass before it was done speaking. Behold, Rebekah came out. And when it was come to Betua, the son of Micah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother was there with a pitcher upon her shoulder. The damsel was beautiful, fair to look upon, a virgin. Lay that any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled the pitcher that came up. And the Bible says, and she ran to meet her and said, let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of that pitcher. Remember, he didn't ask for the camel. The prayer was that anybody that would feed, that would give me water and give the camel is the one you've chosen. The Bible says this, and she said, drink my Lord, and she hasted, and let down a pitcher upon her hand and gave him to drink. And when she has done giving him to drink, she said, I would what? draw water for thy camel and also until they had done drinking and she hasted and emptied a pitcher into the trouble and ran again to the world to draw water this girl was running up and down for a visitor praise god this is the generation when you greet the girl they will never greet you back now she was running to well drawing up and down the reason why is that let me tell you something this is how prayer works one of the things prayer does is that prayer orchestrates, prayer arranges. So, when you pray, all the factors responsible for your success, prayer will bring it together. Can I tell you something? This lady, this might be the only time she has ever done it in her life. But the reason why she had done that was because someone had prayed. When you understand how this thing works, you understand how one day you're about to go for an interview, they never took like not iron your shirt and you eventually wore a certain shirt you got there and the interviewer said wow the interviewer has been nasty to everybody he goes wow my god you have my best color on what's your name and because of that it just opened to you and you wonder ah this is not even the shirt i thought i would wear but because of the prayers you have offered before the prayer was arranging and organizing things it's beyond you it's the influence of your prayer are you getting me The prayer was simple. Anybody that will come, I will carry the picture. Anybody that will do that, what will happen next? Anybody that will carry the picture, it says, and feed the camel. I'm telling you. I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I've seen, you, you, you cannot believe it. I, uh, there's someone in my, there's someone that lived with us. And I remember that she, she particularly had marital delay. I think if I'm right, she must have gotten married at 37. 37. And I will tell you how she got married. I was in the car. This was in, in the old Nigeria when police would just harass you. I mean, they still do that, but this was, I mean, things are better now. You know, in the 80s, it was terrible. I was coming from school. She had picked me up with the driver. And um, what do they call it? And the driver, the policemen stopped us and they were harassing us. There was nothing they wanted that we didn't have. You know what they asked for? Where's the receipt of this car? She didn't know when she lost it. And she just went, she just couldn't stand the insult. And she just fled up. Right there. There was another policeman watching. He said, I've never seen a woman that can stand for a ride like this. And fell in love with her instantly. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is not a testimony. Let me tell you something. This is not a testimony that they said. This is what I saw. 
Her name is, I call her Auntie Pusola. Eight months after they got married. Should I tell you? I'm, I'm, see, let me tell you something. When you see orchestration, this is what the Bible means. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Once you pray, you will just say the right thing. You will not know what, what made that word come out of you. They say, introduce yourself. Say, my, my, my name is Williams. He say, is that your name? That's my father's name. Why do you say Williams? Ah, you know, when I was in Nigeria, one man helped me call Williams. That's it all. I'm telling you, because many of you don't understand that it's prayer that's working. It's influencing. It's directing. It's influencing you as a person. It's influencing other people on your behalf. That's what happened in the case of Esther. The Bible says they tell them, they say, do, 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 do. Esther said, let's go and pray. As soon as they went to pray, Kai. The king was meant to sleep. The king could not sleep. You know, God, I've been trying to get the king's attention since morning. He was having a meeting. God said, me, I will get your attention. He said, I was giving a meeting. He will meet with minister of fortune, minister of finance, minister of all of them, meeting, meeting, meeting. He said, you will forget. When it was time to sleep, he couldn't sleep. God says, there's someone he was paying attention to. He said, he couldn't see me. He now came and I said, okay, you know what? Let me start reading. Let me read about people that have done me well, that have not rewarded. He began to read about Mordecai. Question, why? Because prayer was working. The influence of prayer. Where, where's the card? Give me the, give, give me the, give, give me the, give me the card. Glory to God. This is what prayer. This is what prayer feels like. <laughs> they they give you seven cards. These are your own cards, so let me show you what your own cards are. They give you you are playing what? They give you this card. This is one, seven. This 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 is your card. This is someone's card. Seven of them. They give this other person seven card. These are his own cards. General market, big three, big two. General markets, big five. How will this person win? Prayer is what makes you in the market of life you get an edge. I'm telling you, it's it's what makes you. The reason why what prayer does is that no matter how they arrange the card, it will influence it that it will come into your aid. Glory to God. Look at Daniel, Nehemiah chapter 1. Verse, Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. I want to just show you something quickly. Prayer and organization. You will, yeah, you will just hear that. Ah, my God. I just I saw someone. I, remember, I just remembered you. And meanwhile, they need to remember you for something. The Bible says, And the word of God came to Nehemiah. And the word of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, came to pass in the month of Shalim, in the seventh year, as I was in Shushan, the palace. Verse 2. It says, Then Anani, one of my brethren, came and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that escaped and were left in captivity and concerning Jerusalem. Verse 3. He said, And he said to me, The remnants are left in captivity. I'm just rushing. They in province are in great affliction and reproach. And the wall of the Jerusalem is broken down, and the gates are burnt with fire. Verse 4. The Bible says, says When he heard this, when I, and it came to pass when I heard this, I sat and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed unto the God of heaven. The rest of the chapter is about prayers. The prayer I prayed. Chapter 2. See how prayer worked. Chapter 2, not the next verse. You know, did that request the prayer? Chapter 2, verse 1. See how prayer works. Chapter 2, verse 1. Media guy, hurry now. It says, And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the 20th year of Asterius the king, the wine was before him. I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not been before time sat in his presence. Verse 2. He says this, And therefore the king said to me, why is the countenance sad seeing that thou art not sick they, this is nothing else but sorrow of heart what made the king notice when you know powerful people i hope you know that most of them don't pay attention he says he says then i was very afraid he said i was very afraid he could have said nothing but all of a sudden boldness came look at verse three he says then said i unto the king let the king live forever why would I not? Why would my countenance not be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchre, lies waste and the gates therefore are consumed with fire? Verse 4. He complained and the king said, What's my business? Get out. Remember, I was a slave. Look at the next thing. Then the king said unto him, For what do it thou make requests? He said, Just like I'd prayed to the God of heaven. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, the king asked him, what exactly do you want? And I'm saying this to you because a lot of us pray, but when it comes to like, the, for example, everybody has a digestive system, but a lot of us cannot explain how our food is digested. That's the same thing with prayer. Everybody pray, but we cannot even tell how prayer works. What prayer does is this, and prayer is not magic. This is what prayer does. Sir, just go this way. This way, thank you. Yeah. So what prayer does, this is what prayer does. What prayer does is very, very powerful. What prayer does is that every factor that is very, very important to your prayer achievement, your prayer begins to gather it. It's called influence. Your prayer makes sure everything is happening. So, you know, you, you know, you go to the place, you know, you, everything just seems to work to pass. And the reason why that your prayer is working, you know, you take a step and it's the right step. You talk to someone, it's the right person. The right thoughts begin to come to your mind. The right people begin to bring a relationship with you. And the reason why is because of the prayers. He said, and the king said to me, for what do I thou request? So I prayed. He says, he says, I prayed to the God of heaven. It was just the influence of that prayer. So when you pray, you, you know, when you pray, it's not magical. It's not magic. You are really believing God. You are believing that the influence of God will come to something. And you know what I'm saying though? Because when it comes to things in life, there are things you can control and things you can't control. Yes or no? What prayer does is that it makes the things you can't control come under your influence. It makes the things you can't control come into your favor. Prayer works though. Pray, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I pray, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you prayer works. I can tell you stories from when I was a child, how prayer works, works, works. I mean, something as simple as admission. It was the year I was going to get admission that my uncle just remembered. He knew somebody. All the time, my brother and my sister got admission, they didn't know somebody. But he had known the person. But just a week before, during all those periods, he just met someone that was his friend that had lost contact for seven years. You know, there was no phone that time. And before he knew, bam, it just opened up like I did. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. Let me round up this quickly by talking about something about prayer, which is very important. What exactly do you do, and this is very powerful, when you have prayed and nothing has happened? When you have prayed and praying for a particular healing, I've been, you know, diagnosed with a fibroid, I'm praying about a particular approval, I'm praying about a particular transaction, I've been praying and nothing has happened. Daniel chapter 10 in verse 12. Daniel chapter 10 in verse 12. Yep. Yeah. The Bible says, then said to me, fear not Daniel. And this is, maybe you should go to verse 11. The background of this story is this. Watch this now, everybody. The background of the story is this. Daniel began to pray about something. And for 21 days, he didn't get any feedback about what he was praying for. After 21 days, an angel showed up with an answer. And an angel began to explain what happened in 21 days. The Bible says, and the angel said unto him, Man, Daniel, a greatly beloved person, Understand the words I speak to you and stand upright. This is the angel speak to Daniel when he brought him the answer. And unto them as I'm now sent, unto them as I'm now sent. And when he had spoken these words to me, I stood trembling. Verse 12. He says, Then the angel said to me, Fear not, Daniel. See what he said. He said, For, for from the first day you did set your heart to understand. That was his prayer request to understand something. And you chose to fast that's what he meant by to chasten thyself before the Lord was fast he says thy words were heard he says from the first day you knelt down to pray about the contract he said everyone released an answer ah but what happened he says your words were heard but he now says one thing and i came for your words what does it mean verse 13 how come heaven answered and it took 21 days to get to earth is it night post look at the next thing See what it says. He said, but the king of the prince of Persia, a metaphor for a demonic spirit, which stood me, he says, as I was bringing your answer, 
there was a demonic interruption in the process. He says this, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes. So there are angels that are called archangels and there are angels that are also that are similar to chief princes. There are angels in categories. Yeah, just like you have generals and you have, you know, you could have a, a brigadier general and you have a full general. He says, and one of them chief priests came to help me. He says, I was bringing the answer about your child. I was bringing the answer about your job. I was bringing the answer and Satan interrupted me. The interruption one is not where I'm going to. Where I'm going to is that, how come he said the testimony? Go back to verse 12. Go back to verse 12. The answer is here. He says this, fear not Daniel. For from the first day you did set thy heart to understand and to chase in thyself before the Lord. Thy words were heard. And read the next line. Next line, I want to go. I am what? Come for your words. What he was saying was this. Please pay attention now. You need to catch this. What he was saying was this. When you prayed and you didn't see manifestation. Between when you prayed and manifestation. He said the reason I broke through that demonic barrier. Was because you kept on saying things that aligned with your prayer. He said, I came for your words. He said, you kept on saying things that align with your prayer. You did not change what you were saying. The problem that goes wrong with your prayer is this. You say, in the name of Jesus, I declare, I receive it. One week after you don't see something, you say, well, this not I'm tired. With your word, you have canceled it in the game. Daniel said, he said, for 21 days, I kept on saying, the Lord has done it finally. I kept on saying victory is my own. I kept on saying that the Lord has fulfilled his word. I kept on saying, the angel said the reason why I broke through was because you kept on saying it. He said your words were giving me strength in the realm of the spirits. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? After a powerful service, I've received my baby. Then by when you see your period, I'm tired. God, if you want to do it, if you don't do that, I'm, I, I, I can't kill myself. You have used, listen to me, your words can cancel your prayer. Don't let your word cancel your prayer. Let your word strengthen your prayer. He, the angel said the reason why I broke through the barrier was because I came for your word. It was not even the prayer again. Your prayer were heard. But now I came because of your consistent confession. Oh my God. You will catch this thing though. That was why when the angel appeared to Zachariah and said, Zachariah, you have a child. Zachariah was talking nonsense. Ah! Angel said, the way this guy is talking, it will destroy it. He said, you will be dumb until the child is born. Meaning that you will not be able to talk or interfere until the miracle has happened. You know why? If you keep talking this way, you will interfere with the miracle. He said, shut up! He kept quiet. <laughs> Glory to God. It's not as if God is not answering prayer. You are using your word to interfere with it. And the Bible says life and death are in the power of the storm. The words you are speaking, are they strengthening angels or they are weakening angels? Are they strengthening demons or they are weakening demons? Praise God. You will just keep saying. You will just keep saying. And that's why, look at this. <laughs> when the young girl died and they caught Jesus Christ, they told Jesus Christ, don't, they told the man, don't trouble the master, the girl has died. Because the girl was sick before, he said he has died. And Jesus looked unto her and said, she's sleeping. Why was he saying? She was responding to what they said. As soon as he said she died, he replied his own, is he sleeping? Because Jesus Christ understood spiritual warfare. When there's a gap between prayer and manifestation, if your words are not consistent, you can lose the battle. That's why the Bible says, when Abraham was with for 25 years, you know what the Bible says? And Abraham was giving glory to God. He was giving glory to God. He was giving, I've not seen full manifestation of the healing. I'm giving glory to God. I've not seen the approval. I'm giving glory to God. My dreams have not happened. I'm giving glory to God. In between, and that's why this last week of our fast, we are going to choose times where we declare in the morning, Declare in the evening, declare in the morning, declare in the evening. The reason why is that the Bible says the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11. It says, in the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, sow your seed. We keep declaring. This thing is very powerful. Oh. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Glory to God. Look at what it says. Ecclesiastes 11, 6. In the morning, sow your seed. 
you wake up in the morning and you start talking. You start talking. You start talking. You start talking. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall know what. You start talking. You start talking. You start talking. You start talking. He said, he said, and in, he said, in the morning, so your sin. In the evening, withhold not your hand. Why? He said, for thou knowest not which one will prosper, either this or that. Or whether both shall be alike good. Look at what the Bible says. <laughs> uh, yeah. James chapter 3, verse 2. So when you are done praying, you watch what you say so that you don't use your confession to cancel your prayers. And through your confession, you can. <laughs> Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Look what the Bible says. <clears throat> it says, in many things we offend all. If any man offend not a word, the same is a, is a perfect man, also able to breathe his tongue. Verse 3. He says, watch this now. If you have watched movies before on horses, I need your imagination. He says, we put bite in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. Bite is that rope they put on the horse's mouth. If you watch movies before, when they want the horse to go left, what do they do? They will pull it to the left. With his mouth, his body will move. He says, we put horses in the horse's mouth that they may obey over us. If they want the horse to go right, they will pull it to the right. It will go right. It says, and with that, we are able to turn about the whole body. Paul, James is teaching a powerful principle here. Verse 4. He says this, because behold also, he says, look at it, ships. Though the ships are so big and driven with terrible winds. When he says they are fierce winds, it means that things will happen. You can't stop the window, but you control the ship with the hem. You will not stop the attack on the finance. You will not stop the inflation, the health. He says, he says the fierce winds will come. He said, yet they are turned, not by the fierce winds, by the very helm, where the God not listens, where the God not wants. When he says helm, it means that staring. Look at verse 5. So when he was talking about the sheep, when he was talking about that, he said, what am I talking about? Verse 5. All those were parables. He said, what I'm really talking about is your tongue. He said, so is the tongue a little member. He said, it's a little member that boasted great things. He said, behold, great a matter, a little fact that kindled. What he was saying is this, the same way that sheep, the body of the sheep will obey when you pull his mouth. The same way that the horse will obey when you pull his mouth. He says, if you can change the way you talk, you will change your life forever. The problem is in between your mouth. After saying, I receive husband. And I said, there's no good man. You just can't sue it. After saying, I'm healed. You say, I'm just tired. If I just want to die, let me just die. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Let me just die. And you don't understand that your words are powerful. In prayer, what you offer is words. In confession, what you say are words. They can cancel each other. The angel said, I've come for you. So in between, I prayed and I see. I must keep saying what I prayed about. I must keep my confession. I must keep my confession. Someone says, what well, my things are wrong? Let me tell you what you say. Let's say you feel it in your body. You will say, I feel a headache. I don't have it. I feel it. It's in the feelings. Stop privatizing the headache. I have headache. I have diabetes. I have cancer. I, the doctor said, what do you have? I have healing. What do you have? I have health. That's what the Bible says. Let the weak say that I'm strong. Psalm says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What do they say? It's not so, so, so. He's to say that I have been redeemed from darkness. I have been redeemed from need. Have redeemed from the. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We talk our way out of it. This thing I'm telling you, even scientifically is proven. I read a science experiment. They put, they raised two plants in the same condition. They, the, the scientists wake up one morning and curse one, the other one, and, and say good words to it. After about six months, the, how many of you have read this scientific? You've seen it online, right? The one, the scientists, these are godless people, though, were cursing. Which are they? The one that they were saying good things to began to grow. 
Because words are powerful. Not just the word you say outside, the word you say in your mind. So watch this now. The angel said, I've come for your words. A woman's child died. It was it is well. Well, honestly, the word was it is well. She knew what she was saying. It is well. See, you know, in the physical, when you want to sign contract, you sign with them. Yes or no? And contracts are binding, yes or no? In the speech, you sign with your tongue. Do you, even people that are harbourless, when you watch movies, when they carry sacrifices, they talk to the sacrifice. It's not just about sacrifice. The word is signing. You will say, it's me, oh, Abigail, you, you, you will say it. See what the Bible says, the book of Psalm, Psalm 40, 45. See what the Bible says, Psalm 45. Can, you, can we read together? No, come to, can we read together? Yes. One to go. My heart is indicting a good master. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. See his own pen, oh. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. What is he saying? In the spirit you sign with your tongue. What have you signed with your mouth? I know that, see, I can never do it in this country. You signed it. You signed it. Ah, I hope this thing has not killed me. You signed it. You signed it. Ah, with these rising dollars, I can't do anything. You signed it. Because my tongue is the pen of what? Of a ready writer. In the, in, in the spirit we sign with our What are you signing, sir? Why do you think that when people like Jacob, Isaac, they're going to die, they will call their children. They will call their children and say, let me tell you your future. They were trying to give them will. They were signing their future. They say, you are now a blessed land. They were signing something. You know, you are signing physical document. Can you sign in the spirit? Uh, you, know, you know, the thing is that, let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. I can't make it in this country. Except I travel, things cannot be okay. Things cannot be okay. Once you say so, in the realm of the spirit. As you are saying it, the demon brings the document. Sign. <laughs> you know, you know everybody, everybody in my family has hepatitis and diabetes. Yeah, that's it. So, me, I'm always, uh, I, I'm, I'm careful so that, <laughs> you know, because I know that it's assuming my turn. Sign. Some of you won't tell your children. You even tell your children that, you know, when you grow up, we all use glasses. He said, my, my tongue is the, is, the, is the pen of a ready writer. That means anything they want to sign in the spirit, you say it, you sign it. That's what the Bible says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. It's a truth your words, you are heading bondage to the word you are set free. Ah, you know I me. Mean? You know, you know I me. Mean? You know that no guy likes me because I'm doing my career. Have you heard what you have said? Have you heard what you have said? No guy likes me because I'm doing my career. That means for you to marry, you must be poor. And if you choose to do it, nobody will like you. Who we'll signed it? You signed it. You can't get any contract in an NPC except you know somebody. Who we'll signed it? You signed it. What, when I make you say things like the Lord is my shepherd, you think you don't, you don't know what we are signing spiritual contracts. Are you here? Are you here? This is the reason why your prayer has not been working because you will pray today. Hey, Baba, ora, you fast. As soon as you did the prayer, you say things that cancel your prayer. Can I show you Mark chapter 11? This thing is serious, so Mark chapter 11, verse 24. 23, 24, yeah. 24. Not 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall send this mountain, be thou removed, and that cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say yet shall come to pass, he shall have what? He said, "You shall have this." Is the, he said, "You shall have it." Your life. Let me. Let's be plain. Your life has just turned out exactly the way you said it to be. 
You may deny it, oh, you may fight it, oh. You know, and let me tell you something. They say, what you say in church? Hey, hi, oh, brother, this. No, no, no. What you tell yourself as a person. You tell yourself that I have no value. And your heart turns out that way. Those that have been with me, Pastor DG, Pastor DG, Lord, stand up. He's known me since when I was 11 years old. 11 or 12. I've been talking this. I talked that you will come when I was 12 years old. I said this, that they will gather. Yes. When I was 16, I told them I will have a conference in London. I will be at Wembley. 16. Nobody in my family is a pastor. In fact, when I got born again, my parents were not born again. But I saw it in this book that whatsoever I'm tell, he knew me. He's not something. That, he knew me when I was 11 years old. We grew up in the same neighborhood. We're all, all our parents are family friends. I said it. I, my mother, best mother, I told my mother. My mother said, "You are mad." He said, "You think is it because a child? You don't think well." My mother's prophet came back and said, "I will die young." My mother showed me the letter from the mountain. They call it Oketabura. I said, I will not even pray because I've seen my future. The scripture says, I will not die, but live. Praise God. Words are like rail station. Walls are like rail. Once you set the train, once you set the rail, the train has no choice than to follow the rail. Everything you say is setting the rail. It's setting the rail. So the problem is that when the train is moving, you want to change it. You can't change it. What you have to do is to begin to talk and set another trail. Stand up, let's pray. Praise God. You have a choice to keep quiet. You have a choice to talk. What I know is that life and death are in the power of the talk. The first thing you will do is that you will pray that the mercy of God will override negative what you have spoken. Over yourself, over your partner, that the mercy of God will override negative what you have spoken. Then once you have done that prayer, you will begin to declare, let's go ahead and pray. 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 Thank you. Let's go ahead and pray. 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 Now, open your mouth and begin to declare. Open your mouth and write and declare. Declare about your health. Declare about your health. In old age, I'm strong. Declare about your children. Declare about your grandchildren. Declare about your walk. Declare, declare, declare. You have made me a wonder. Kings are coming to the brightness of my lightning. Please shout out, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Declare, declare, declare. Declare. I'm full of strength. I'm full of life. I'm full of energy. I'm full of glory. Declare, my business is working. My marriage is strong. My marriage is strong. My children are growing up in grace. Declare, this hope carries children. This hope carries children. Let my children come forth. Go ahead and declare, nothing good dies in my hands. Nothing good dies in my hands. Declare with your mouth.
said to me, people, you need to make up your mind when you get home. In the morning, and in the, that scripture in Ecclesiastes, he said, in the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, sow your seed. Imagine when you have been talking all these things for many years. If you want to build another rail, start talking it. And you don't want to talk one week. No, you will start saying it. See what? In the morning, sow your seed. Your seed means speak. In the evening, with not your hand. For thou knowest not how to prosper. Not every small thing. Ah, you know, I'm getting older. My, my bones are becoming weaker. What kind of confession is that? My youth is renewed like the eagle's wings. That's what it is. My youth is renewed like the eagle's wings. You declare. Praise God. I say, praise God. Let's declare Psalm 23 together. And when you declare, don't just say that. I never say recite. I say declare. Recite is what you do in kindergarten. Declare means with faith in your heart. This is my portion. This is my reality. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me thou preparest a table before me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies thou anointest my head with oil the oil of favor the oil of grace the oil of ease thou anointest my head with oil my cup run over my cup run it over my cup run it over my cup run it over surely goodness and mercy they follow me into every week into every month they follow my children they follow my grandchildren if they follow my application they follow my businesses, they follow my approvals in the name of Jesus. Somebody say grace, say grace, say this is my story. Oh, glory to God. Praise God. Talk your way, talk your way, talk your way talk your way mind your language mind your language we give you praise oh God and thank you because everything you said to us we receive everyone that words have been used against them today we bring a correction we cancel the effect of wrong words over marriages over children over health in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory! Say with me, say this year will be better than what I prayed for. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. you can have your seats. Hallelujah. Glory to God.